All right, we're going to connect with Brady Hoke momentarily. Again, San Diego State is going to play their spring game on Thursday. That'll be on the Mesa. So here's the deal, okay? It's going to take place on the practice fields behind PS7, right, on campus. It's open to the public, free admission. Gates open at 5. Fan activities feature free minim, uh, mini stadium replicas. That'll get Jim there. So you get a free mini stadium replica. Is that the only way I'm going to get in the stadium this year? Probably. What? what because you're <laughs> going to go into the stadium recl- replica? Yeah. I like that. Um, there's going to be appearances by the band and cheerleaders and the dance teams, cornhole games, inflatable games for kids. There's like going to be it. a DJ. I like it. San Diego State bookstore merchandise sale and concessions. And But wait, there's more. Uh-huh. Football legends, DJ Pumphrey, Brian Seip, they have been named honorary head coaches for the spring game, wow. and they're going to sign autographs uh, before this event. So there's tons of stuff going on. There'll be an autograph session with Pumphrey and Seip at 530. And again, free admission, really your last chance to see San Diego State in a public setting before they take the field September 3rd at the brand new Snapdragon Stadium in Mission Valley. So a ton to get into with the head coach of the Aztecs, Brady Hoke back with us, his football team Nearing the end of spring practice, and again, that spring game will be Thursday, late afternoon, early evening with free admission. Get there to support this team because, again, the next time you're going to see them is in Snapdragon Stadium. Coach, always great to connect with you. People always want to start with the quarterbacks, so let's start with the quarterbacks. How has the group looked? You know, Will Haskell, Braxton Burmeister, and others as they uh, complete this spring here. Well, I think we've had a really good uh, competitive spring coming off a really good, uh, John, competitive uh, uh, winter, you know, with winter conditioning and, and just seeing the mindset of guys and really, really pleased with how uh, Brax came in here and competed since day one. Uh, really like uh, what we've done with uh, Will Haskell and Kyle Crum. Uh, and uh, uh, Lou has uh, really come on, too. And he's uh, uh, the four of them have been really competitive, but uh, right now, you know, obviously coming out, we we really think Braxton is the guy who will, you know, take the most of the snaps and uh, uh, lead our offense. Coach, for you in spring practice so far, what has stood out, uh, good or bad? Well, uh, you know, we're just young. I, I guess that's the biggest thing I can say, you know, especially on the offensive line, you know, and I I love how Alma and uh, Brandon Crenshaw Dixon have done a really good job of leading a young group of guys. I think Mike's done a nice job with them, uh, Mike Golf, and, and has, has pushed them. And um, we had a 97 play uh, scrimmage on Saturday morning. Uh, really got a lot out of it. And, uh, you know, I think that, I think our tight end position. I think the addition of Mark Redman has been huge for us. And then uh, I think defensively, um, you know, our linebackers, I, uh, I think that's as good as you can get. Really happy with Justice Tavai, Jonah's brother, uh, uh, Garrett Fountain, Keyshawn Banks, and Jonah have all uh, done a great job. And uh, I think we've improved there. Uh, Pat McMorris has uh, continued to improve and, and get better, and so I think the back end, we're getting a little older, uh, but like I said, you know, John and uh, Rich, the, uh, the the big problem is uh, just getting the offensive line to, uh, uh, you know, grow up. <laughs> yeah, which is probably easier said than done. Uh, Brady Hoke joining us right now on Extra 1360. Again, Thursday's Aztec spring game is going to take place in the practice fields behind PS7. It's open to the public. Free admission. Gates open at 5. Tons of activities for families and children as well. Coach, you mentioned the fact that you believe that Braxton's going to lead your offense. Is that into the spring game or is that into fall camp in the 2022 season? Yeah, John, I think, you know, obviously I think uh, uh, unless something during the the summer, you know, uh, uh, he doesn't want to work out anymore. He doesn't (laughs) want to get better, something like that. You know, I, I, I think he definitely right now is the guy going into fall camp who we would f- feel uh, good about uh, starting with. Coach, when you lose as many players in key spots as you do, uh, how, how much of a challenge is it to 
replace them and, and and to make sure that those spots are filled going into the next season with you know how much production you got out of uh, guys like Cam Thomas and other players like that. Yeah, oh, there's no doubt, you know. And uh, uh, Jim, we we've tried to you know uh, fill some of those uh, uh, voids, you know, with the portal, and I think uh, uh, in that way, you know, uh, I feel really good where we're at with it. There may be another guy at a position. I can't tell you which one because I'm not sure. But, uh, you know, where we're looking at maybe trying to strengthen ourselves uh, uh, with another guy out of the portal. But, you know, I, I think uh, really the attitude of the guys, the attitude of how they came in here, because, you know, you take too many guys uh, from the portal, you, you could have a problem with your uh, – or, or if you, you don't have the right – um, chemistry, you know, you can hurt your football team an awful lot. Brady Hoke joining us right now, John and Jim, extra 1360. So as we turn our attention to the spring game on Thursday and there'll be fans in attendance and there's free admission, uh, what are your expectations for th this game and this scrimmage? And what, what can fans expect to see on field from your team? Yeah, uh, number one, we got to play hard. You got to be able to hear football. Mm -hmm. You know, I always say that in the game. You, al you always got to hear football. And uh, us playing hard and playing physical and staying healthy. Uh, that, that's probably, uh, uh, John, as much as anything. You know, and uh, we also, today, we, we had our pro day. And so we had about 55 scouts in here hmm. and coaches uh, uh, working the guys out, and it was really a good day. Yeah, that's that going to be my next question is how did Pro Day go for you and, and how did Pro Day go for, for your former players now uh, trying to make it in the NFL? You know, the guys uh, uh, that participated, you know, Cam did not. He's uh, waiting until the 4th uh, uh, of April. He, he's been working through a, a, hand, a hamstring. But, uh, you know, the guys did a nice job. I think there were some guys who probably really helped themselves. And as, as always, you know, sometimes there's some guys that don't work hard enough, don't get themselves ready and uh, you know or, or don't participate and, and it hurts them coach for our listeners that aren't familiar and I don't know how familiar I am either after spring practice you go from a phase two to a phase three right so tell us about the next phase and then from there you get ready for fall camp right yeah you know we, we we're uh, our guys have the week off next week uh, is spring break and when they come back, they'll start heavy training six weeks with Coach Hall in the weight room. Uh, they'll they'll uh, do some senior-led uh, position uh, work, uh, fundamentals, um, and, and then, you know, uh, some skelly. And, and then as we uh, go through the summer, uh, th there's different things. You know, early, you want to lift hard. You want a lot of heavy weights being thrown around uh, because you want to – uh, increase your muscle mass, increase strength. Uh, and, and later, as we go through the end of uh, phase three, then, then it's more of your, uh, uh, your, your runs and your shape and all those kind of things. So uh, we'll, we'll have uh, the players will be on a pretty rigid schedule uh, for a while. And then obviously coaches, the lifeblood of your program is recruiting. And so we'll take uh, – the month of April, um, uh, into April and into the beginning of May, and we'll be recruiting. When do you turn on for the first time, or maybe you've already done it, do you turn on Arizona film? I mean, that's your opener September 3rd, or what's that like from a coaching perspective? Are, are you looking at future opponents at this point, or when do you start doing that? Yeah, yeah there's no doubt. We'll, uh, uh, we'll get all our breakdowns uh, of the uh, first four, uh, all – you know, five games from each. Uh, obviously, if we have played a team that uh, a year ago, that that uh, tape will be included in that five games. But uh, you try and go to the end of the year to see how people have played, how they've changed a little bit, what their personnel's like. Uh, the one thing about Arizona, they've uh, they've really been busy in the portal, so they're going to have a different looking football team. Uh, than we played against last year. So uh, from that standpoint, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll be on that pretty hev uh, heavy. And then, you know, we, we start camp season. you got 
you know, we got our camps here, our two weeks of uh, uh, passing tournament and then a, a day of, uh, of skills camp. And then our coaches also will be traveling um, to uh, Dallas, I know, for a mega, clinic, a mega camp and then uh, up in uh, Sacramento. So we, we, we got a bu busy schedule, uh, but uh, it's, it's, it's fun. And, uh, really proud of our guys right now. Sounds like a full-time job, Coach. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it might be. It might be. Brady, uh, we appreciate it. We're looking forward to Thursday. Thank you for your time, and uh, we look forward to catching up uh, after the spring game as well. Sounds good, guys. Thank you very much. All right, Thanks, Coach.